with this Bible class. I'd like to thank the radio station for this a lot of time, but most importantly, we've come together this morning to praise and to worship the Lord. Jay, can you leave some word for prayer, please, Mr. Sir? Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for this day you've created, Lord. Father, we thank you for the cool weather, Lord. We thank you for your breath of fresh air that you sit in the junction this morning, Lord. Father God, we just lift up this time to you, Father, as we come to worship and pray to you in song and, and speaking your word, Father. And we just ask, Lord, that you join us here, Father, and that you enable your Holy Spirit to move among us, Father. Lord, we just lift up those who are traveling on our highways, our byways, and the airways, Father. And we just ask that you guide and protect them, Father. Lord, we ask that you be with those who have sick ones and loved ones, Father, that are are going through tough times, we just ask that you comfort them right now, Lord, and that you guide them and be with them, Father. Now, Lord, we just ask that you send your Holy Spirit to join us here, Father, as we lift up your holy name. It's in your Son, Jesus' name, that we pray. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate those prayers. I hope everybody's having a glorious morning this morning here in Junction. It's like, wow, what is it, like 20 outside? <laughs> I mean, when it goes from 104, 105 during the week, and it's 59 on Sunday morning, it's good. <laughs> it feels, it's a little bit, God knows when we need some relief, and he laid it on us this morning, didn't he? Yeah. I was, uh, you know, I mentioned in four that we have puppies, and as you have puppies in the mornings, you've got to get up and wear your animals like babies, and you got to either feed them or, in this case, take them out in the morning. And I sit there in normal time to get up here, so I can get up in the mornings on Sunday so I can get up here and set things up is, you know, I was sitting there, it was about 6.30, and I was sitting there laying in bed, and the dog started wrestling. And it was about 6 o'clock, and they just kept wrestling, and they kept wrestling. And I kept thinking to myself, I said, well, it's only about 30 minutes, maybe I can just stand there wrestling for a while. But after a while, I said, no way. So I had to get up, take them outside, so I'm up a little bit earlier than I normally was. And I turned on the TV which I normally do and watch some of the preachers preach. And here in the last couple of days, I've been feeling different physically. And you, know, you start reaching to a certain age and you start thinking about where your parents were at that age and some of the things maybe they had gone through physically. And I started thinking about my dad and some of the physical ailments he had. And this morning I was kind of feeling a little bit strange. So I got up a little bit early and I turned on the TV and I listened to Kenneth Copeland. And it's really pretty neat. And he was really had the crowd going, and he had everybody standing on their feet, and he started speaking about what we put, what comes out of our mouth. The words that come out of our mouth. And he said, he said, the letter everybody said, do not fear. You know, God's with us, do not fear. And be careful what we say and what we receive. And then he started talking about, he said, there's no such thing as a generational curse. And I'm like, whoa, 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 and I backed off a second. I said, that's biblical. Generational curse is biblical. What goes down from the Father and the Son and four generations? He said, what it says is a generational curse. He said, but what your father had is not necessarily what you have. What happens to what you have is what people continue to tell you you have. Your dad was a drunk. Your mama was a drug addict. They keep preaching that and telling you that. You keep hearing it for years so you start receiving it. He started making sense. And he started quoting from the Bible. And it said twice in the Bible, it said, by his stripes we were healed. So we don't have to receive that thing. It says it in Isaiah. It says it in Peter. And I started looking up and I said, I got closer to the TV because I didn't have my ears on, didn't have my eyes on. I just got closer to the TV. And then he was talking to me. And I started receiving the words instead of listening to what my dad did 20 years ago. I said, man, I need to mark this because I need to mark these spots. Isaiah and second first Peter. So I'll remember to say that it's been baptized. I pulled out a piece of paper in my Bible, and the note that I had on a piece of paper that I pulled out was Isaiah 53, 5, and 1 Peter 2, 24, the exact verses that I wanted to mark. This was for me this morning. Here all this time I thought I got up for a couple little dogs to let them go out. <laughs> But I got up because in my mind and in my verse and in my ears I've been hearing you're not feeling good because your dad had not been feeling good at your age. But basically what I heard was God's greater is in, he, in me than he that's in the world. And I received those words this morning. I got a little teary this morning. got a little excited this morning. And I remembered that God is with us. 
and truly by his stripes we are healed and we need to receive what he has given us instead of letting people talk to us. God is good. We just need to remember that. And we, we need to remember that when we're talking to our friends and family members instead of laying stuff on them. We need to remind them how good God is and everything God has done for them and how blessed they are and how smart they are and how pretty they are and how talented they are instead of kicking under the curb. Be careful what you say. God is truly good. We got a young man that wants to speak to us this morning and, they say, and he's good. He's a visitor in our community. We're glad to have you. His name is Richard Hibble. Richard, come lay the Lord on us. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Radio man. I just want to say thank you and I want to give praise and honor to God. Without him, I couldn't be here. Because without him, I can't do nothing. And uh, I'm coming out of John 15, the true vine, and say, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine, vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and yet even every branch that bear fruit, he prunes that may bear much fruit. You are already cleansed because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I am abiding you. As my branches cannot bear fruit itself unless you abide it in the vine, neither can unless you abide it in me. I am the vine, you are the branch. He who abide in me, and I abide in him, bear much fruit. Without me, you cannot do nothing. If Anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and throw, throw it, throw, gathered and thrown into the fire, in the fire and burn. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask what your desires and it shall be done for you. See, God is speaking here about you being a branch. branch uh, branch. See, without God, we can't do nothing. You know what I mean? It, with, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Bible, it's speaking about the vine dresser. God, God is the vine dresser. Jesus is the vine. And we the branches. See, because uh, even uh, every branch is said to be in Christ. You know what I mean? If we, if we ain't in Christ, we ain't nothing. You know what I mean? Because I remember a time when I was on the corner said it though. I don't know if y'all understand what I'm talking about because I once was a drug dealer. They just called me all kinds of things. But now they call me a man of God. And I think that, you know what I mean? Because without being with God, I didn't have nothing. And I understand that what that scripture say, if you uh, don't have, if you, uh, they say, uh, without him you can't do nothing. I know I can't do nothing without him. And I thank God for choosing me to do this will, because I want to do his will. I always wanted to preach when I was little. Me and my uncles used to put up a little, we build a pulpit. And uh, one we would sit, two would sit out there, and the other would get up and preach. All three of us, you know, we would drug the church, but we didn't stay in church. You know what I mean? You know, I once was a drug dealer, and I was once a drug addict. But you know, instead of me getting drugs back then, I mean, placed in uh, church then. I wasn't getting drugs back then, because I was just, it was just a religion. It was, I, wasn't, I didn't have no relationship with God then. It was a religion. You know what I mean? It's different than being a religion and having relationships. Because in the Bible it says, He said, I do not call you servant no more. I call you friend. You know what I mean? It's good when God calls you friend. Because everybody else calls you anything else but the uh, uh, man of God. You know what I mean? It's just amazing how God changed my life. And I thank Him for that. You know what I mean? Amen. Ain't nothing I'm supposed to be preaching about. Ain't nothing. I'm going away somewhere. That's the Holy Spirit, though. But. <laughs> That's how it is. You know, God, if you try to, I don't care how much you stay, he'll put you in something else, you know what I mean? But I thank God for what he's done for me, you know, because I come from my own ways. I've been to the prison, not three times, not four times, but five times I've been to prison. And I thank God for changing my life, you know what I mean? Because if I wanted to change my life, I could be in uh, uh, hell or in uh, jail or anything, you know what I mean? I could be in, uh, in prison. But I thank God. 
for taking me and chose me. You know what I mean? Because in John 16, it says, You did not chose me, but I chose you and appointed you that, shall, that you shall bear fruit, and your fruit shall remain. And whatever you ask in the Father's name, and he will give it to you. You know what I mean? So he chose nothing and nobody. Me. An old drug addict. An old drug dealer. You know what I mean? Because I used to sell drugs. And one time I tried my own product. I mean, I became my own good customer. You know what I mean? It's just the way things happen. God didn't have us here to do dope. He had us here to speak to the people. You know what I mean? You know what? You might not like me, but you can't stop me from loving you. That's one thing. God said to love one another. You know what I mean? I'm going to love you regardless. If you don't like me, enough, you can't nothing do nothing about it because I'm going to still love you. I don't care what color, creed, crazy you are, I'm going to love you. That's what I got on my heart, to love, to love God's people. And I know God is, is an awesome man because yes. he sit high and look low. You know what I mean? He looked down in San Antonio, Texas and took me off a corner they called uh, uh, Sarah Street where I was standing on the corner selling dope, hurting his people. You know what I mean? And he told me to take away from, stop doing that. You know what I mean? I used to ask God, I said, when it's time for me to stop, I know you'll take it away from me. And he did that. And I thank you. In 2001, when I got out of federal penitentiary, I changed my life over. Amen. And ever since, I've been trying to share, share the word and preach to God's people and let them know how good he is. He also God. He'll give you anything you want. He gave me a BMW in 2003. You know what I mean? He gave me a BMW in 2003. Right now today, we're me and that BMW still together. It's been nine years. That's my <laughs> black marvelous wife. Her name is Demita Dipper. And I thank God, because without him, you can't do nothing. He'll give you your heart desire. Because in the Bible, it says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. And he finds favor in the Lord. And he gave me a good wife. And I thank him. I thank him right now. And I want to give honor to the ministers of the house right here for giving me this opportunity to speak to the people. And in, t in the radio land too, I know some people might be out there wondering why I'm here to speak. But God got it on my heart. I can't not tell what he had done for me. You know, see, because the whole time I was going to school, I played football. I was good football. But I could have played for the Cowboys or Houston Oilers, any team I wanted to. But I decided to sell dope. But the whole time that what I'm trying to get at is when I was going through school, they passed me because I could play football. But nowadays you can't get no education if you can't read. I couldn't read. I couldn't read or write. But God changed that in 2001. I can read now. You know what I mean? I just give him all and all the glory because without him I can't do nothing. They tell you that in the Bible. You got to stay and, and pray. As long as you pray, God will help you. That's the main thing is prayer. You got to open your heart up to him. Give him all you got. He don't want 60. He want all of it. He want 110. He don't want 80% of it. You know what I mean? I used to cuss like a soldier. But he took them words away from me. And I thank him. I thank him. You know what I mean? He's an awesome God. You know what I mean? Because in, in, in uh, Isaiah 43, 19 or 18, I think it's 18, he said, do not remember the formal things he said he will give you a new thing. He said I want to do a new thing. He's doing a new thing in my life right now. How do I think I'll be here in Junction, Texas, preaching to people here? It's all about God. God can do things that you never think that he'll do, man. I mean, he's awesome. You know what I mean? They call me everything in the sun and the book. But you know, in Peter, he said, he said uh, uh, humble yourself, therefore, in the mighty hands of God, and do time in exhaustion. He exalted me. I'm a deacon in the church. Been there for uh, 11 years in my church. I go to Victor Gospel Chapel in San Antonio, Texas. 1603 Montana Street. You know, God is just awesome. You know what I mean? I would call everything there but a deacon. I can't imagine from being a drug dealer, a drug addict, become a deacon. Ain't nobody did that but Lord. Man cannot do it. I don't care what you say. Anything that you get, you get a raise on your job, the Lord did. Man didn't do it. It was law. He do everything. That's why he tell you to get 10% of your tithes. Get 10% and 90% is yours. You just don't know how good it is when you give 10% of your tithes. You know what I mean? And God is going to bless you. He'll bless you more abundantly than anything that ever been offered. 
You know what I mean? Because Jesus died upon the cross. And what he died for is more precious than money, gold, and everything. And it was his blood. See, the blood covers you. It cleanses you. All you got to do is just say, Lord, help me. Forgive me for all my sins. And he will cleanse you with his precious blood. Instantly you will be saved. But the rest of you have to be through the process. You got to go through a process. See, in this Bible, it said that uh, when Jesus, God, uh, will get ready to uh, prune the trees. And see, prune means cleaning. Once of the fruit or a, a, the vine is under, the vine dresser will clean the fruit from bugs and diseases. And the spiritual counterpart is clean, which does not, does through the word. See, that's through the word. That's how you get clean, through the word. It tells you right there in the Bible. You get clean through the word. The word is just awesome. It'll, it'll take you a long way. All you got to do is just believe in God. God is so awesome, man. He, I mean, he's awesome. I can't stop saying it, but God, see, he's awesome. And I thank you, man, because I didn't know nothing about God when I was little. I had religion going to church. It was just a religion. It wasn't a relationship. It's different when you get a relationship with God. You speak to him. You pray to him. He'll talk to you back. If you don't talk to you, he'll send somebody to give you that same answer that you've been waiting for. He will. He will. That's the truth. He'll give it to you. I mean, God is awesome, man. I just want to let y'all know how I feel about being here. I thank you, TV, uh, Radio Land, and everything. And I thank the minister for letting me share the word. Y'all God bless y'all. Amen. 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 A lot of praise to the name of Jesus. So we're going to sing a song. Thank you. 